image description, an opening slide with the words Marvin's Market Adventure Storytime with Gwen McCormack, brought to you by the Family Learning Partnership of State Deafblind Projects, is shown on the screen. Underneath the words are an image and logo for Marvin's Storytime Show. There are also logos for the 21 state deafblind projects, including Mississippi, Indiana, Florida, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Georgia, California, Illinois, Oklahoma, Kentucky, South Carolina, South Dakota, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas, Arkansas, Puerto Rico, North Dakota, Virginia, Kansas, in Idaho, along with the logos for the NFADB and Positive Eye. Underneath the State Deafblind Project logos is the Ideas That Work logo and disclaimer. Hello everyone and welcome. We are so excited that you are all here watching the first show of Marvin's Market Adventure with us. Uh, my name is Brandi Sabera and I work with the Minnesota Deafblind Project as the Family Engagement Coordinator. So before I hand you over to Gwen, I'd like to review accessibility options for the show. We have ASL interpretation available, which you should be able to see on your screen now. We also have closed captioning available. <clears throat> to view the captions at the bottom of your screen is a CC button, and you'll wanna click that to view your options and turn those on. Additionally, Spanish language translation is available. If you would like to view the show in Spanish, please click on the globe icon at the bottom of the screen labeled interpretation and select Spanish. This will show up in just a couple of minutes. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Queremos eh, informarles de que las opciones de subtítulos están disponibles al igual que lengua de señas americana y el lenguaje español. Para seleccionar el, el idioma español puede ir a la barra inferior donde aparece un globo o un planeta o si no aparece puede dar en los tres punticos donde dice más allí usted podrá encontrar la opción para unirse al al canal de español muchas gracias thank you very much thank you so each of these accessibility options will be available for all of the market adventure shows and i also wanted to let you know that story time is presented in webinar format so you don't need to worry that you might accidentally turn on your mic or camera. We won't be able to hear or see you during the show. And now I'd like to turn it over to Gwen. Thank you. Hello everybody and thank you very much indeed for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here everybody and to lead us in an exciting adventure with Marvin over the next few weeks. It's a great honour again to be with my wonderful colleagues from America. I think this is the 10th um, Storytime show run. So I have a really interesting hour for you where I want to share with you about how Marvin's Storytime show supports your child's access to literacy. And so I've got some images to show you. I've got a few PowerPoint slides to show you, but not too many. Some video clips of the children enjoying the show and a few little um, bursts of me in action. Uh, so this is probably the quietest and calmest you'll see me. Um, when we come back next week for the live shows, um, it will be full action, full energy and high enthusiasm, uh, fast pace all the way through. So I'll start off by just explaining who I am when I'm not wearing a sparkly hat um, and uh, don't walk around my village here with my sunny sunflower hat on, although it's very tempting to. So my name's Gwyn McCormack. Um, I'm from the United Kingdom. I live in the northwest of the United Kingdom. And my professional background is, is as a qualified teacher of children with vision impairments. I have 42 years of experience, both as a teacher and now in the last 17 years as a trainer. So I support educators now who are working with children with vision loss, 
with any complex need. Um, as director of Positive Eye, which is my company, I'm a niche co uh, company, I'm a, a micro business, but I travel international, internationally and I'm award winning. Um, and I think my reach is right around the world and I'm not quite sure now uh, how many children and families and educators I've, I've reached over the last 17 years. But I think it's a, there is a ripple effect that continues. So that's who I am um, and um, the first thing I'd like to just share with you before we delve into Marvin is just to explain the um, collaboration, the exciting collaboration that uh, I'm part of with my lovely colleagues in America. So I would like to show this on, um, on the slide, on the PowerPoint slides. So you just have to bear with me for the in and out of the PowerPoint slides because uh, it just takes a couple of minutes to pop in and out. Um, so the one I'd like to show you is just this, just because it's a lot of different organisations, so I thought it was easier to show it on a PowerPoint. So it's a partnership of 27 state deafblind projects and myself, uh, and I'm the programme developer or the creator of the Marvin Storytime Show Literacy Programme. So the partners include the State Deafblind Projects, the National Centre on Deafblindness, and the National Family Association for Deafblind, and then a variety of professionals and organisations who promote the development of communication and literacy for children and families affected by deafblindness. And it's like I said, it's a huge, huge honour to be part of this wonderful collaboration. So what is uh, Marvin's Storytime Show? Well, it's an online, primarily an online programme, but I also do do it in person. When I've come to America before now, I have done in-person shows in Florida um, at different conferences when I've visited, but it's really designed mainly to be delivered online. And I, I think it has different qualities when it's in person and when it's online, but that's, that was how it's been developed uh, um, really and truly as, as, a, as an online platform for story time. But it enables access to story or to literacy, whichever word you prefer to use, beyond the typical reading book, because lots of children and young people with a complex need require a different way of accessing story. And so this model includes children with deaf, who are deaf blind. It, it works for all children, all ages, all abilities, all needs, inclusively of children and young people who are deaf blind. And the programme, the, the literacy programme, which is delivered through the Marvin Storytime Show, is set within a multi-sensory framework to promote access to literacy, to maximise the opportunities for literacy through a, through a wonderful multi-sensory framework. And I've incorporated specific techniques and resources, all simple, all possible and all doable by everybody. Um, everybody can do what I'm doing. And those skills, those techniques and resources are incorporated to promote those skills that children require to access literacy. And they're fun, and they're cheerful, and they're bright, and they're happy, and they are things you can do at home with your children. So, as a team of state deafblind projects and Gwyn McCormack from the UK, we have over the last nine, uh, four years, sorry, four years, we have collaborated together to deliver nine show series of different lengths. Some we've done eight weeks, some we've done three weeks, some two week show runs. This one is going to be a three week show run. And I think this will be our 10th show run. It's incredible. And the team I work with are incredible. I am so honored. It's such a joy to work with everybody and the attention to detail and the planning that goes into Producing what we produce is just wonderful. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful, the show is a wonderful experience to be part of. So I'd like to talk now about the aims of the programme. 
uh, or aims of this show. So I'd like to go back to my PowerPoint presentation. I can say I'm not a big PowerPoint presenter, so I like to have my face in the screen so that you can see me rather than a, a slide. But these are the important points, really. Um, these are the aims of the Storytime show. I think it offers a starting point for accessible story time. It offers the bridge to accessible story time for, you, for the whole family. It's inclusive of the whole family, of the whole class. It offers you a home library. It certainly does now after nine showruns. There's a huge, enormous bank of resources of the recordings, the stories, the songs. So it's a wonderful home library. I hope that it builds your confidence uh, to, to, to be me, to channel your inner Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn and, and build your confidence to deliver your own story time show. You, you can take the small snippets, the little bits that you feel comfortable doing and, and reenact those at home. It increases your child's literacy and language skills while having the best fun. And that's the ticket of this show. The approaches and elements are easy to do at home and the show is fun. The primary aim for the children is to have the best fun ever. And now after four years and countless shows for, for my, with my colleagues in America and now my own show that I also do, I know, I know it brings the best joy, the best laughter and giggles and smiles and fun. And that's primarily the best part of it. And, you know, we learn when we're having fun. So I think it's time to watch a clip of the show. So this is not the market adventure, which we're going to be doing next week. This is from the Seaside Adventure, um, which I've done many versions of. So it's a short clip. It's an explanation, really. It's not. It, it, there's no sound of me talking on it, or just a little bit at the end. There is music playing behind, but it's more because it's a demonstration. On the live show, there is no music behind me on purpose, um, you know, because it's distracting, and we want it, I wanted it to be one voice, one face, one voice nothing else to distract so that so there's no background sound no pow pow ping pong it's just purely one voice so it makes it easier for the child to cue into my voice but on this clip there is sound there is piano playing behind and the instrumental is by my son tom maestro tomity tom who's who has written and composed all the songs on all the stuff for, for all the stories on that Marvin Storytime show. So any music and any songs that you hear me sing or in the story resources that you receive are by Tom McCormack, um, which is wonderful, you know, to have a, a talented son who I feel has created the ethos of the show. Um, it's beautifully Mary Poppins-esque and exactly how I wanted it to be. I think children benefit from this, the, from the songs, the sort of songs that are in this show. I think they, they're what children need and they really benefit. I think as adults, we actually benefit from them as well. I find my, myself singing them around the house all the time. So they are joyful songs um, that I absolutely love, love singing. And I'm singing my heart out next week. Here we go. <laughs> Boys and girls, welcome to Marvin's Storytime Show with Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn. Whoopity do, whoopity do, whoopity do, whoopity do, do do. Roll up, roll up, roll up. Get your popcorn, get your ice cream. My name is Marvin, and I'd like to say if you make someone smile, it makes their day. Boys and girls, my name is. Ah, Gwyn 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 Gwyn. Do, what would he do? What would he do? Do, do. It's 
it's so nice to see you today, Marvin. Oh yeah, you too, Grinny Gwen Gwen. Wow, look at all my friends here. Can I say hello, Grinny Gwen Gwen? Of course you can, Marvin. Grinny Gwen Gwen, am I incredible? Absolutely. <laughs> you are incredible, Marvin. I know I am. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the wonderful world of Marvin. He's such a character, he's so charming. Melting Morris has a problem, he's been melted to the ground. It's lucky for our snowman that Marvin is around. Aboard the Winter Wonderland Express, the gang are on a mission, will it be a big success? Mr. Raymond the Reindeer's scarf is tangled in his antlers and he can't see where he's going. Oh no, and he's stuck on the railway track. Quickly Marvin, to the rescue! And Crafty Cora, the Carrot Cake Fairy, and Marzi Morty, and Marzi Morty, Di loves pies. Blit, splat, the black and white cat. Splat, the black and white cat. Joggle, 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 joggle. Let's rib it, rib it, rib it, rib it. Let's rib it, rib it. It's the end of the show. Oh, where did the time So that's a, a lovely clip of uh, the Storytime show. Uh, I'm not an actor and I am not a singer, a professional singer. I sing from the bottom of my beautiful heart and I deliver the stories with every ounce of energy and, th and enthusiasm I can muster in myself. It, the point is it's not a professional theatre show. It's not meant to be, it's story time and I want you to take the ideas and teach you to take the ideas and everybody to be going having fun with the story time and to have that confidence to do that. So it's not, it's not a rehearsed performance and I'm not a professional actor or singer. But it's joyous, it's wonderful and I just know it's changed outcomes for children over and over again. So I want to share with you a little girl who's been watching the show right from the very start. Um, and she just absolutely loves Marvin's Storytime Show. I think we'd call her a super Storytime Show fan. Um, and she now watches my shows as well, which is on a Sunday. And um, I have the video on as we start. And often she, I can see the children as they join. and. Uh, as soon as she hears my voice, I, I can see that she just wants to try and climb through the screen to be with me. Her excitement, and she's showing me Marvin, and she just can't, you know, tell me enough how much she's happy to see me and Marvin. It's just so wonderful. Um, you know, that recognition, and uh, I know she's benefit, benefited so very much. So I've, I've got a picture of her now, and then a, a little clip later on. And I mean, she just, this little girl, I think, is wonderful. and makes me feel so very happy every time I see her picture. Um, and her mum has been so very generous and kind and really helped me, um, you know, to bring this story time show to the world uh, by sharing so many wonderful outcomes. So there's a picture here of the little girl. Uh, she has lovely, beautiful red curly hair and green glasses on, a little pink top and some green leggings. And she, her, she's, um, her body is, 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 she's sitting down and her little toes are pointed with great excitement and tension and she's got a sort of elbows up and a lovely wow expression on her face and she's sitting looking at the laptop watching the story time and just around the laptop specifically she's got the crafts that we make on the show. This is a, a picture from quite a while ago now but she's got various different crafts that we did. Um, and the text reads, um, this is from her mom, full body engagement from head to toe, including down to her pointy toe, 
The story time show is the highlight of this little girl's week. Asha just loves the story time show. And, you know, if ever I'm having um, a day where I think, oh, I, I go and look at the, that, the pit, the, that beautiful picture, it, it, it absolutely encapsulates the joy of the story time show uh, in one moment, uh, one beautiful moment in time. So, uh, so many, so many things to say about this wonderful program. It's so exciting, it's so exhilarating uh, for everybody involved, but mainly for the children. So I'd like to um, think for a moment now about the underpinning framework, of the, um, the pedagogy, the reason why I developed it and, and why I think it supports literacy and learning the skills you need to access story time. You know, what are the, your child's skills that they need to develop so that they can participate in story time? And that will be so individual and unique to each of your children. It's never going to be the same for each child. It's always going to be a unique package. But there's a little framework. Um, I often refer to these as the rainbow planes um, or the rainbow arrow planes, whichever you like, really. Um, I, I talk about a lot of training, um, train lots of educators uh, on literacy and literacy access, uh, access skills. So I think vision and auditory and language skills and tactile and fine motor. So by tactile, I mean feeling things, feeling different textures. Um, fine motor, by that I mean um, being able to grasp by the hand, use a, a, th a thumb and finger, pincer grasp, that sort of thing. Hand strength uh, is what I mean by fine motor. Uh, book and story skills, that book and story skills can look different for each child. And concepts, that's more about the understanding of the world around the child, um, the cupness of the cup and the plateness of the plate. Uh, and the faceness of a face. It's developing the understanding um, of the shape and form and colour and purpose of an object or an activity um, or an event. I call it the ness of the experience, the spoonness of the spoon, the forkness of the fork, the knifeness of the knife, the cupness of the cup. So I think of those as, as um, Rainbow planes. We have a display team here uh, with our Royal Air Force, and they you, you probably have something similar. I'm, I'm absolutely sure where they go out in their jet planes, and they have the plumes of coloured smoke coming from behind. I'm sure it's not really called smoke, but you know, it's plumes of colour coming from behind. Um, and I think of that. I think of those planes in formation, flying above every single child's head everywhere in the world. And each plane is representative of one of those skills. So the biggest one in the middle is the jumbo jet, which is the concept development. Because a lot of the auditory and vis visual and book and story come from concept development. It all goes back into concept development at some point. So the jumbo jet in the middle, the big plane, is the concept development. And then we've got visual or vision, auditory and language, tactile and fine motor. You could add on lots more other skills. It's not exhaustive, but for the sake of today and being, you know, uh, not uh, getting too detailed, each of those planes represents what I call a literacy access skill. So using your vision to the maximum and us making it e as easy as possible for the child to see or using your hearing to the maximum and making it easy as possible for your child to hear, they're what I call your literacy access skills. They are the skills, the things your child needs to develop in order to be able to participate in story, the curriculum, in daily life, in everyday living skills. So those planes fly with your child above their head from being a baby all the way through their life. We've all got the planes above our heads. And the, the, the selection of skills from each area will be pulled down and a package formed of what your child needs at that time. And that will change over time if their eye condition changes, their, um, their 
their whole condition changes. And as they grow, things change, so needs change. So that package is a flexible package that develops over time with the child. It grows and develops with the child, but those planes never leave your child's head. And that's how I like to think about it, and that's how I talk about it and teach about it. They are the access skills to take part in story. And the thing about the Marvin Storytime show, when, you, when we get to the actual story, when I'm delivering the story part, because there's other parts in the show, the, the story, the adventure that we're going to do, the market adventure, is only one part of it. Some of your children won't understand the words because it might be too advanced for them. I understand that, I know that, and I'm aware of that. But I'm not ever going to produce something that's going to work for every child in every way ever possible. It's just not ever going to happen. It's just not realistic. So, it, but within the story, there's so much rhythm, repetition, bright colours. What they're doing, if they don't necessarily understand the words of the story, they are building the literacy access skills to participate in other story time or other activities. So don't worry if your child doesn't understand the words I'm saying, it's okay in this instance. And I know from the outcomes, the information that parents and teachers have given me, that children will watch this show without um, taking their eyes off the screen. They, are, they give it constant, consistent attention Children that you would think wouldn't watch for one minute because you think it's to this, it's to that, they're never going to watch that. They are the ones that watch the whole thing without moving and maybe aren't very happy when it's over and <laughs> want to watch it again and cry and, you know, shout because they want to watch it again. So don't underestimate, you know, go with it because it's the smaller parts of the greater whole. There's something in there for everybody it may not all be for everybody. But as, I'm, as I produce a programme that's for all ages, all abilities, all needs, you'll understand where, where I'm coming from, I, I hope, with that. But de developing the access skills, the use of vision, use of hearing, to participate is what this show is doing as well, so wonderfully well. So it's so exciting, it's such an exciting programme. Um, and fun, you know, it's fun. Uh, and I just know so much more now, obviously, than when I started four years ago. I have lived, eat, eaten and breathed the show for four years. It's true to say. Uh, so how does the show support participation? We're going to go back to my slides now. And it is one of my favourite subjects to talk about, the Storytime Show, by the way. I love talking about the Storytime Show because it's so exciting for children who often, you know, they don't have anything else. And this is why it's so exciting. So the show follows the same structure each time. That means the children know what to expect. It builds anticipation and excitement. I build, I'm really good at building excitement. You can hear it in my voice now as I'm getting excited myself. It builds opportunity for participation and for you to participate. You know, it's audience participation all the way with this show. We can't hear you, so you can sing as loud as you like and whoopity do as much as you wish. And it builds the most wonderful engagement, concentration, just that communication and connection is phenomenal. It's really important. My big top tip here is to watch the recordings over again repetition and the regularity of participation will lead to greater outcomes that the recordings are so 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 vital every day if you can put me on i become part of your family i'm there in the background gwinny gwin gwin just it's so so important it's it, it really proves to build that that literacy access and there's children now who've watched for a year in my show here in the UK and in schools and I've been to watch them watch me <laughs> I've been to watch them watch me which is a strange experience but when I've watched them watch me and I'm bringing Marvin on 
I can see the ch faces change and know what's going to happen next. They're anticipating, they're recognizing the colors, they know what's going to happen next. So, but that doesn't happen just by watching it once. You have to watch over and over again. You know, just have it on your phone, have it on your um, whatever communication method you use with your children. And it, the siblings enjoy it too. It's not, it's for everybody in the family. But repetition, we really know is so crucial to building literacy, positive literacy outcomes. So there's a few things that I've done, you know, a few resources and a few approaches that are within um, the show. So the show is set on a black background. I work from the back of my house. I'm not in a professional studio. This is a makeshift studio. I've had to be resourceful and creative to make this space work. And actually when we started four years ago, it didn't look like this. It was not as good as it is now. It's still not perfect. Uh, you'll notice when I move, that happens. That's because I don't have any professional lighting and I can't do more than I've already done. And I'm not a professional lighting technician, so I'm out of my depth in solving that one, I'm afraid. I've done what I can. So I try not to do that, but obviously I've got to move a little bit on the show to pick things up. So when you see me do that, I can only apologise there's nothing else I can do um, about it, I'm afraid. But the black background is crucial, absolutely crucial. Black, black and no clutter are really important for access generally anyway. So I have a black blind. Uh, this is not a room, this is a, into my sitting room here. This is, these are just two black blinds that roll down and I clip them together. I, I'm actually more of a marker than I used to be when I started. I started with a piece of black felt. So I'm, I'm actually now uh, quite professional, I suppose, in a makeshift space. So it is from the back of my house. It is makeshift, but it goes live across the world to the USA from the back of my little house in the northwest of England, which is really exciting. But the, the black background is the important part of this. It, the show uses high contrast resources to make it easier to see, hence the white, the, the hat, and hence the uh, colour. I wear red and yellow on the show. If I was doing this in person, I would wear black. But I only wear red and yellow basically because of the I'm on one webcam. Again, I'm not I'm not in a TV studio with professional uh, cameras. So um, it, the, if I'm in black, the camera doesn't know where to expose to, so it sort of blots me out. I'm not saying that very well, I'm not very technical, but it just basically it just doesn't work. So I have to wear a colour to balance the exposure. So, you know, I advocate black uh, normally, but that's the reason I wear the, the, the colour on the show, purely for that. Also, I think it that guides the child to know where to look. I wear red lipstick, so when I move my mouth, it helps the children to follow my mouth uh, and my big facial expressions and my whoopity do wee wee wee, um, and I'm very expressive when I start. Um, and I wear black eyeliner and black framed glasses. I wear glasses anyway, but the black framed glasses make a really big difference. If I didn't have those on, black framed glasses with no lenses in or red framed glasses are a really good tip. I don't think that's now quite as easy for you to see or for the child to see. So I've made it easier for them to see me by framing my framing my face. Like I say, I'm a glasses wearer. I can't see to do this without them. But if I wasn't, I would wear the, wear the black frame or red frame, but take the lenses out. Um, so that's just another tip. It all Honestly, these are game changers. These are small tips, but they are game changers. I, I know because I train and teach on this all the time. So there's no background clutter. I've learned about this over the years. So no background clutter. It's just one, one voice on one plane so that it makes it easy for the child to know where to look because there's not lots of things happening. Ping, pow, 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 zip, 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 wow, pow, wow. They're just looking at me. Uh, they, they're looking at me or they're looking at one character or two characters. I can't hold any more than that. So that's it. Three people, three, two characters and me at the very, very most. So it makes it easier for them to know what they're meant to be looking at because we're taking away everything else. We've decluttered 
the declutter is really important. So one, one voice on one plane. I don't turn around and I, and I basically, I move a little bit that way, I move a bit that way, I go up a bit, down a bit, and that's all I do, in and out. So I haven't got much movement because I haven't got a lot of room. <laughs> I'm on a tiny corridor, trust me, I've got tables either side of me that you can't see with the characters on. Uh, and, you know, I'm capable of dropping the characters and that has happened. Things do happen when it's live. But it's it's very much a tiny space and I don't do any big large actions i don't do any clapping i don't do any clicking of my fingers just because it's a, a, another noise on top of my voice so i just don't do it again i've learned how to do this over the years i'm not saying i always got that right to begin with but i've learned and i'm trying to learn as much as i can as i go along um so all those things what i'm doing and i like this language this is nice positive language that i teach all the time i've made it easier to access story. I've made it easier to hear. I've made it easier to see. I've made it easier to access learning by taking action and putting in place a few little steps. They're all simple, possible and doable by us all. There's nothing I'm saying that is difficult for anybody to do. And lots of schools here now have black walls, black backgrounds, decluttered areas in their classroom. So I want to dive in now a little bit more to the, uh, a bit more about the different elements of the show. So I'm just going to bob along now and talk about how the show's structure, structured and the elements of the show and do some little demonstrations. Um, and I, when I, next week when I do the show, I don't stop to talk and, and um, have a chat with you. It's like, a pro it's like watching a TV programme. You know, it's like watching a proper show and we start and it would, I don't stop till the end. It's a workout. <laughs> it's a workout for everybody. The interpreters on the show as well. <laughs> we all know we've done this show because uh, it's so such high energy. Interestingly, I know for some children, the high energy might be too much. And I understand that too. But it's interesting that um, the high energy for some children actually calms them down. Um, and so many parents have said that to me. Now I've collated so many outcomes over the over the years, you know, now I've got that bank of understanding. But the show starts with a wonderful warm welcome from your storyteller, Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn. Um, and I use big chili the pom-poms, and you'll hear me do a big whoopity do and I go for pom-poms in a lovely big whoopity do of a warm welcome and a roll up, roll up, roll up, get your popcorn, get your ice cream. And I do a lovely welcome, it's the same every week, so everybody knows that we're starting the exciting show. And then I use um, my, uh, I have these red gloves. These are what I call the Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn Great Game Changer Gloves. Everybody needs a pair of these. I have never yet used them as a child and not been successful. They are a low cost pair of red gloves off Amazon. In, in the, the UK, they are two or three pounds. So I don't know what that is in dollars, but it's, it's a, a few dollars. I buy big yellow fluffy pom-poms. They're really nice and soft, the softer ones. And they've got to be five or six centimeters, no smaller. And I hot glue gun them to the palm of my hand. And then I can do a big hello. So I'll do, he uh, my, uh, sorry, I'll do my, my name is Gwyn, 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 and I say it a lot of times on purpose because I want to engage the children. If I just did that once, it wouldn't be enough. So again, this show is not for us, it's for the children. So I repeat it on purpose um, and it's rhythmic. But if you can sing that along with your children and go along with me and sing with me and sing Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn, I'll sing that around the house during the week. It gives them that rhythm and that da 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 but if you can get some red gloves with the yellow pom-poms and become Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn. 
Um, so I then I sing a happy, a happy smile song that you, that you heard me say in the clip. You know, my name is Marvin and I'd like to say if you make someone smile, it makes their day. So spread the love and joy around. Laughter is my favourite sound. <laughs> So I ask you to laugh. So if I ask you to laugh, laugh along with your children. It's so good for you. And it makes you want to laugh even more. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all about finding our inner joy and our inner child. And it's really great when you do that. Um, so those are the sort of things I do at the beginning, the cheerleader pom-poms, the um, singing the two, a, a little happy song like that. Uh, and then I do the Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn welcome with my red gloves and yellow pom-poms. Uh, I don't wear those to do the actual story just because they're a bit too difficult to cope with and the characters. Uh, so I do take them off and put them on again at the end. But why do I do that? Well, number one, I said about my face and cueing them into my face. Facial expressions build social skills. They're really important, aren't they? High contrast faces help social skills. Red gloves engage and cue the children into the rhythm, high energy voice and repetition. And this just encourages that engagement. If I just did Gwyn, 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 it wouldn't be quite as good as Gwyn, 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 Gwyn. It builds anticipation and it promotes visual attention. A visual skill is visual attention, the, the a, a child's ability to attend. These red gloves really do help children to attend. Um, and I've just got a few little pictures now. Um, uh, well, I've got one picture actually here of um, <clears throat> uh, a little girl which, looking at the at the gloves and in, and enjoying the looking at the gloves. Uh, this is a little girl from the UK who's watched all year. She joins my Sunday shows, but uh, I don't think there's a better picture, is there? Uh, there's a little girl. She's got a red top on, and she's got uh, she's got the iPad on a black table surface, and um, there's a she's watching me. She's quite close to the screen. Her mouth's open with joy, and uh, she looks like she's really excited. And I'm on the show with my red gloves, and she's really engaged and enjoying the show. So I've got a nice outcome here. Uh, this is from a teacher in a in a school, and she said. It says, Marvin's Storytime Show, Phenomenal Outcome. She's been gorgeous singing along. She remembers straight away, smiled away as you introduced it. And then when you do my, my name is, she's been saying is, and hello, 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 and giggling away. And she's been saying whoosh, 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 and also verbalizing Marvin, Marvin, as you shout for him. Gorgeous is what the teacher wrote. So that's incredible. That little girl actually is registered blind. Um, so that's a phenomenal outcome, isn't it? So many outcomes within that one piece there, you know, of her real engagement and listening. And I've, I've been into that school and watched that little girl watch me and she sits right next to the screen and she just loves it. She's concentrating and waiting for me to do the next bit. They yeah, are just, just really, um, really in, in, incredible. So the next element of the show is I do name calls. So if you'd like your child to have a name call, I think you've filled in your application, your booking form now, and those children get a na one name call out over one of the show on one of the shows, and we let you know which show that's going to happen in. And of course, it's that. With the, with the um, gloves on, hello, 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 Zach. Hello, 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 Zach. Hello, 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 Zach. We think you're incredible. Oh, we think you're amazing. So I use the gloves and I call to the child to let them know it's their turn. And I go, hello, 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 Zach. Hello, 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 Zach and then sing, we think you're incredible. Interestingly, some of the children really love that we think you're incredible. It's amazing what they pick up on and what they actually really tune into. And then I'll do a dun, 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 in between each child's name and they like that as well. So, uh, you know, it's amazing because they've watched regularly. The little girl who I've just spoken about, that outcome I just read out, she's watched regularly for a year 
And it just shows that's the regularity. You wouldn't get that outcome without that regularity and repetition. But the name call just is lovely to have your name called out by the Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn on the story time show, isn't it? What a lovely thing to have happen. And it personalises it for the child. It engages the child to look towards the screen. It's saying this is where you need to look and you're listening and you're looking. So you're learning to look and you're learning to listen and realising that when you do that, the fun stuff's going on. So it really builds that lovely anticipation and excitement and participation. And they, like I say, they love the rhythm. Um, they love the rhythm of the whole thing um, and the fun element. And it's a joy to do. I have another outcome. This is from um, a little girl who watches the American Storytime show, this, the partnership here. Um, and it's, I've called this a positive literacy outcome, Marvin's Storytime show. She will be so excited to hear her name. She just loves Storytime. She hears your voice and immediately starts to look around. It has been so much fun. We really enjoyed the show. Hate that they've ended so quickly. My child just laughs and laughs. She's also been paying more attention to stories since story time began. Incredible. Well, that's a wonderful outcome from one of the children who watches the show, again, with great regularity um, in America. So another element of the show is the rainbow spinner. And so many parents have said to me, Gwyn, this rainbow spinner just builds visual stimulation so many children love this so the sound for us as adults is probably really annoying <laughs> it is annoying but it's not for us it's not about you know it's, it's not i'm not doing it to entertain myself but that wee 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 that i do when i spin it really matters so i count it down and i do a wee 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 and i try and move myself out of the space i've not got much room so i have to sort of lean back and then I go, wee, 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 and I go really fast. <laughs> and then I see if I can go even faster. But this is just a garden windmill. It's really nothing fancy. I've had a little screw put in the back of it because I really give it some, uh, I really spin that spinner very fast. But really good for building visual skills, attending and fixating, looking towards, opening eyes and looking at. So good for visual stimulation. And it cues the child because they're listening for the we sound. <clears throat> so the vision and hearing are working together to support each other. It's exciting and fun. And the children just love that spinner. And so simple. And everybody can go, wee, 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 wee. You can all do that. I'm not special in my ability to do that, make that sound. So I want to show you, um, I'm just watching the time, so I'll, I'm going to show you the same little girl that you saw to begin with. And this is a picture, this is a little video clip of, um, I'm just going to bring it up first, there she is. Uh, hang on a second, I'm just getting it ready, one second. Uh, this is a little clip, I'll just describe it before I show you, it's only short. It's a little girl with lovely red curly hair and she's sitting watching the story time show. She's got the laptop on a little stool and she's sitting on the edge of a chair and I'm about to spin the rainbow spinner. And it's just really what, watching her reaction um, and her enjoyment of, of that moment. There we go, it's just that first little bit really, rather than the second little bit. <clears throat> I also just want to show you the children in a school watching the show on a big screen. Because that big screen, if you can, I know it's not always possible, and, and you may not have that facility to do that, but I'm just showing you it, if it is possible, to just show the children the um, show on a big screen. Um, and these are the, there's the boy on the right here, is the boy who um, anticipates Marvin, uh, <clears throat> oh, there it is. I've nearly lost my thing from it. There it is. Uh, this is a boy who anticipates 
Um, just a second. Wait a minute, let me go back. Beg your pardon. One second. I just want to show you. It's easy to show you the actual clip. <coughs> then show you in the PowerPoint. Here we go. So this little boy on the right is the boy who anticipates Marvin as well. These two boys have both got cerebral vision impairment. Yeah, it's just um, having the room darker and that sitting cl sitting close to the screen just ha has a lovely impact. So now I want to just share with you an outcome, another outcome written by Asha's mum um, and um, of how she's incorporated the rainbow spinning into her play, into her daily play. She uh, says, Marvin's Storytime Show, phenomenal outcome. She adores rainbow spins and I can, <coughs> excuse me, incorporate the whoopity do into her everyday play. Her whole body tenses with excitement the very moment she hears Gwynny Gwyn Gwyn. It's a little difficult to put it into words, but there's a marked difference in Asha's reaction to the Storytime Show than her other enjoyed programming and that's pretty I, th I think that's pretty phenomenal you know that she watches other programs but this one is different it engages her in a different way so another element of the story show is obviously the international superstar that everybody's talking about Marvin <laughs> uh, here he is he's a high contrast puppet uh, with black woolly hair and um, black round frame glasses, a lovely smile, a yellow sweater, green pants and yellow and um, blue boots. I, I'm really not bothered about the colour of his uh, pants and boots because I want the children to look at his face, not his boots. So that's the bit I'm, I don't show, hardly ever show the whole of him actually. I normally, well I do sometimes but mainly it's this bit. I hold the back of him um, and off we go. It's, I'm not a ventri, I can't say the word ventriloquist. So I don't do anything fancy but I'd give Marvin an enthusiastic little boy's voice. I have boys of my own and I remember what they were like and I listen to children out and about and I just give them an enthusiastic voice so he'll go, oh hello everybody, it's really great to meet you. I'm called Marvin, I'm really kind and helpful. Have you got any really great toys? I really like light spinners. <laughs> and he laughs like that. <laughs> and that makes me laugh. When I make him laugh, it makes me laugh. <laughs> so you see how much fun I have on the show. But he's a very kind boy, absolutely loves meeting new people and loves to make new friends and is friends with all the children unequivocally. Um, and he is your friend forever. And I do a big hello, 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 hello. And your children have a Marvin doll. It's not a commercial Marvin doll, it's just a, a boy doll. Any, any doll is great, but uh, you know, the Marvin doll. And then we hug Marvin and tell him we love him. Um, so the high contrast face makes it easier to connect with. When I show Marvin to the children when I go out and about doing face to face shows, they can't take their eyes off him. It's because he's high contrast. They're just mesmerized by him it's, and they just love Marvin. It's, it's so beautiful when you meet the children with Marvin. It's emotional because they just really love Marvin. It promotes social interaction, promotes common social language of hello, hello. It's got sing song voice intonation that I'm using and it encourages imaginary play. Bring your Marvin to the show. It promotes engagement in imaginary play. Take him on little trips out with you. Take him in the car, take him to the park, to the store. Marvin loves you, he loves you all. Adults included, you're loved too. Everybody's loved by Marvin. Um, so it's that high contrast puppet. So I just want to show you the same two boys that I just showed you uh watching marvin it's only a very short clip just a second while i bring it ready uh just this it's so lovely to see them engaging with marvin on the big screen hello 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 hello
So lovely, absolutely lovely. Just that nice engagement. Okay, so another wonderful outcome from a parent um, <clears throat> of a little boy who has watched the show, uh, the show I do in, f f with, it, with this partnership, um, <clears throat> and how he, how, because he used Marvin and they used him in pretend play so much as well as on the show, this is what the, his mum said. He hasn't let go of Marvin and he's been engaging in pretend play with him all day, clapping hands, trying to make him dance and walk. It's been amazing to watch, especially as this has been one of our long-term goals. So to see this suddenly emerge is so exciting. Again, just an incredible outcome. And it will be different for each child. There's no right or wrong. It will be different for every child. So the story is told using high contrast characters. I use 2D high contrast characters that I make. I design and make them. I'll just show you one because I'm just watching the time now of slipping away from me. And you'll see plenty of these on the show. I use glitter paper and acrylic paint and they're all made on grey board and designed by myself and my husband helps me make them. Uh, Labour of love and the hats to match. So beautiful 2D characters that move in and out of the screen, backwards and forwards, up and down, side to side. Um, and I tell the story, the adventure, the market adventure in this instance, using them. And, and again, that story's got that repetition, rhythm and song. You have a storybook provided in print or braille if you've requested it. So some children read along in braille as I'm telling the story. Why do we do that? It supports access to literacy and language. The characters, the children can't take their eyes off. It increases engagement, looking, listening, vocalisation, participation in story. They're learning the skills to take part in story. They're building their vision, their auditory skills, their language skills. It brings story to life in a multi-sensory approach. It gives you the bridge to accessible story time for the whole family. Okay, we're just going to slip on a few. One, the last element of the show really are the crafts. So each week, live on the show, I make a craft associated with one of the characters. And you'll have either about to receive your craft box or you've received your craft box. It's a massive organisation, logistical organisation, but you receive all the craft materials for each craft I'm going to make in little bags. And you can make it before, during or after. It's a lovely thing to do. I've just got a couple, not from the Market Adventure, but crafts we've made before. You know, this was from the Woodland Adventure we did last year. So these can be used as manipulatives. They promote tactile discrimination and fine motor skills. They promote imaginary play. You can use them. When I'm doing Mr Fox the Socks, and Mr Socks the Fox, you can use your character um, it promotes engagement in story, again, looking, listening, vocalisation, participation in story time. So the crafts are a, a very important element in the, in, the, um, in the whole of the story time show. And although it, your children might disengage slightly at that moment, I sing while I make the craft to try and keep them engaged. And I change my camera onto my desk. So I, I'm a singing craft maker. So I know we're running out of time. I've got three minutes left. This is James. He was a little boy that, you, that watched the show in America as part of this. And I just want to show you his mum, or this might be his nurse actually, using Fabby the Frog. While I'm doing Ribbit Ribbit, she's using the craft to do, or the manipulative to do Ribbit Ribbit. And finally, to end, um, in my last two minutes, I just want to show you, share with you the story time show wish of a mum, Katrina, because this really brings it all together in a beautiful nutshell. <clears throat> it gives me the...
It gives me the greatest pleasure to share with you Katrina's Storytime Show Wish. Here it is. My wish for the Storytime Show is for every child around the world with any sort of visual impairment and beyond to get the opportunity to experience Gwyn's productions. Her vibrancy and knowledge leaves engagement and smiles to all who watch. It serves a dual purpose as not only leaving an all-inclusive performance, but ignites a light for parents, caregivers, and educators to see the joy that can be brought on by going the extra mile. Even though story time is absolutely original, you do not know what you are missing until you have seen it in live action. When we start by meeting the needs of those who would need it most to be included, beautiful things can happen. Gwen's story time is what the world needs because it starts with inclusion. I couldn't wrap it up better than by Katrina, who is a mum of a, a little one who's watched the story time show as part of this partnership. So that's it, folks. I'm at, I'm at 10 o'clock UK time. Thank you very much.